Hey guys, we are back tonight. We are uh, we're going to be doing uh, some tie beam joinery layout. Now, I had I'd started filming this probably uh, probably about halfway through the building of this thing, so I had a lot of the joinery cut already. This is my last tie beam for this barn, and I'm very excited about it. Um, can't tell. Where we started out the video, did a little bit of cleanup on the uh, of this one on the mill. Um, didn't come out perfect, so I think I've got to go through the mill a little bit more. And there's something a little wonky there, and it's probably I know it's user error. So, but I've got two really good square sides that we can uh, we can do our layout from. That's what you need anyway. So, so the scarf joint. Out of all the joints in this barn, this was probably the one that I was worried about the most getting right. And because they're pretty important, I mean, they need to fit well. Your big tie beams right down the middle of this barn, these scarf joints are what's holding it together right down the middle. So that's what's keeping this thing from folding out like that. So, but anyhow, standard rule of thumb laid out by Jack Soban is four times the depth of your beam. Um, a lot of timber framers only go three times the depth of the beam. I'm going three times. So this is going to be a 16 inch wide beam or deep beam, however you want to say it. I'm going four feet, so I'm going three times. Otherwise, I would have had to have a really, really long scarf joint. And I'm having a hard enough time getting timbers this big that are good enough to use for what I need them. So I'm just going to do a walk around of this thing. Down here on this end, I have a spot right on the end that I don't like too much. But I did end up uh, cutting quite a bit of it out of there. And I have another foot I can take off of this. About Now, probably about 18 inches left I can take off. So this is the, uh, the top scarf. So this is the scarf that's going to sit into the uh, bent that we just stood up the other day. So I'm just going to go with it and start start running this thing so all right so we're wanting to go from the best end so what we need to do I need to get the overall length of this beam remember what I said guys use the same tape measure throughout your process it helps so I've got uh, 17 feet, three and a half inches, so a little less than a foot and a half I can take off of this. But I already know I have some points on here that I don't really care for too much. This end being one of them, but this end is actually perfect for the scarf. It's not a lot of big knots or anything like that. That end down there I have my reservations about. So I think what we're going to do, I'm going to get a mark here. And this will make sense in a minute here. If I've got 19 feet, let's go. Eh, hell, that we'll just mark it up to 17 feet, 17 foot mark. So we talked a little bit before about reference face and adjacent face for this beam. This side right here, back up this side right here, that's going to be my reference face. This guy right here is going to be my adjacent face. This point where the reference face and the adjacent face meets, that's my heiress. That is the point where all measurements for this beam are going to come from, all the way down. Because this side is beautifully square to each other. I mean, it's, it's absolutely perfect. This being my adjacent face, and I'm squaring off of my reference face. We're going to get a starting point here. All right. Well, there's our starting point. Now I want to lay out the length of this beam. We're going to do it off of that line, which I know you can barely see it on the camera. This wood's pretty weathered. Not rotten, but it's weathered. So 
So you're wondering why we have a clamp and all that good stuff? No. So what I'm going to do, I need to get the length of this beam. Overall length of this beam is going to be 16 feet. I like to hold the tape a foot over the line. You are looking for accuracy here. If you are not accurate with these cuts, nothing's going to line up right, and you're going to be so pissed off at yourself when this thing doesn't go together the way that you want it to. And when I tell you guys about this stuff, it is because I have messed up everything I'm telling you not to mess up. Okay. So I've got my one foot there. We're going to go down. We're going to lay out. And so this is 16 feet long. I'm going to lay this out at 17 feet. Again, a good sharp pencil if you want good clean lines. If you have to sharpen this pencil every friggin' minute, you sharpen it every minute. Now you notice that when I go to square this up, I'm not doing it off of this side here. I'm doing it off of the reference face and the adjacent face. Everything's off of the iris. And I know you're saying, well, quit repeating yourself. How many times do we need to hear it? And I get that, but uh, that's too important not to repeat because that, that is one of the most important parts. Okay. So there is our, there's our length of the beam laid out. Now, other thing that we have to do now now we're going to start laying out this scarf joint. Now, when this joint was, when I had this joint described to me, it was described to me in such a way that I thought it was like friggin' rocket science. I got to be honest with you, I was scared to death. Scared to death to tackle this joint. Let's see if we can zoom in for you. It's not as bad as it, as it seems, though. You know, it really isn't. It's really not bad at all. So, five feet. And I'm going to measure in an inch and a half. And that will become clear why we need that inch and a half here in a minute. And also, I'm going to come to the middle. So, two feet is going to be the middle. But here it lays out to three feet. And that will also become clear in a moment. Now we come down here. From this 12 inch mark, or the beginning of our layout, we come back an inch and a half. Okay. So, now we can start. Uh, now we can start doing a little bit of layout. Top of the tie beam right here. All right. So this is the part that really. This is the most important part to be flushed with the piece that's going to mate into. Simply because if it's not flush, you're going to throw all of your uh, your flooring is going to be way off, and we don't want that. So what I need to do. Again, you hold your tape measure. I'm going to lay out the under squint of this right here. So for me, it's four inches. So again, I'm going to come back an inch and a half. All right. Double check it. Now remember when I said that your your framing square. Was a good was a, a design for timber framing because of the standard measurements on it. This is an inch and a half wide. This part here, so I'm just checking my measurement there, and that's right on. So what I want to do now, now that I've got that where I want it, I'll make my line right there. There, you guys see that? So that's the start of our uh, the start of the undersquint. We have our mark right here. 
and we want to double check to make sure that that's four feet because you really don't want to get this all you want to get this all said and done and then have a uh-oh you know okay so we're going to measure down this guy I want to hit the 12 inch mark all right so again we're measuring from the arras, measuring down. I'm not going to measure, I'm not going to come down here, hit my 16 inch mark, and then measure up four inches from that. Because, like this guy right here, this beam's about a sixteenth of an inch over 16 inches. So what were to happen if, if I measured from the bottom up instead of from the top down, or from wherever your arras and your reference space is, if I were to measure that from up here, I throw the whole joint off a sixteenth of an inch, which it's not a lot, especially with joints this big. But you're still looking, you're looking for as much accuracy as you can for those moments when you have an oops factor. You know what I mean? But so what I'm going to do, I'll make a line right there, just a real, real short line. I'm going to come here. Back to my inch and a half mark. I'm going to mark out my 12 inches. Actually, you know what? I have that backwards. <laughs> Goobers everywhere. You can see how this could easily, you could easily make mistakes doing this. It's funny, every time I cut, I haven't done one of these in a long time. Every time I cut one, I have to relearn. But anyhow, We've got our mark right here. It's our 12 inches down from the arras. Now remember how we squared this this mark here, this guy up here, all right? This right here is we're laying out the uh, under squint for this side. Again, we're going to go inch and a half. And keep your marks small if you can, just to avoid confusion. We'll make sure you can see them. I almost, uh, almost went against my own advice again. So right now I'm looking for 16 inches, right? Measuring from the top. Well, I've got a little mark right there, but that's actually where I'm going to draw my line to that point. I'm going to carry it through that point. That's where it has to go through. <clears throat> now, why don't you look at something here. I don't know if you guys can see it, but say that I had gone to this edge being a sixteenth of an inch over, and say I wasn't going to this point. If I were to draw my line to the edge, I don't know if you can see that, but that actually changes the angle of that under squint. What would happen there is this thing would line up right. It would be close, I'll give you that. I mean, it would be real close. It'd probably be close enough, but you're going to have other things that you fudge. That's just the way it is. All right, now what we're going to do, we're going to connect, we're going to connect the dots here, okay? So this is where undersquint lays out. When I was explaining this, I had somebody tell me, somebody who's very good at this, gave me a whole friggin' rocket science explanation on laying a scarf joint out. And that's why it was so intimidating to me. You know, I, I decided that I wanted to figure out a way to make it a little bit simpler for me and still maintain the proper principles for the joint itself. So this is the way I do it, and it keeps it simple for me. Now, you guys can do it. I, I can't sit here and tell you what to do, so you guys do it how you want to do it and what works for you, but this is what works for me. We need a good long straight edge here. Now remember, 
same thing. I've got to go to that point, not to the edge, to that point there. And that's how you make up for inconsistencies. All right, we're going to come down here. We're going to do the same thing, but we're not going to go all the way with it. All right. Now on this end here, I am going to go right to the edge with this measurement, or with this line. So I got the center point of our scarf joint right here. And I want to measure over an inch and a half. Just do it with that, and I've already got that. You're going to take your square and you're going to square it up on the line that lays out your scarf joint. Nice and square off of there. If you don't have it nice and square, your wedges aren't going to fit right when you cut them and put them in. And there we go. We have a scarf joint laid out. Wish this wood was a little brighter, you guys would be able to see it better. Let's see what we got. Let's see what we have. So, so there's the beginning of our scarf joint. See how we measured back from the uh, Back from the end line, we measured our inch and a half to lay out the under squint. That's the part that's going to slide into the uh, top part of the uh, scarf joint it's meeting up with. So we came down, we found the center point, we put a mark there. And then we laid out our, uh, and we laid out the other under squint. So, Another thing you want to do, I know I'm droning on and on tonight, guys. Not much, uh, not much imagination stuff here tonight, but what you want to do when you're all said and done, double check all your measurements. Don't, uh, don't take for granted that you did everything right. Again, I messed one up, and I'm going to show you guys at a future video. And I didn't catch it until well after it was put together and in the air, and I should have caught it. I don't know if it was just one of those things where I just decided I was going to live with it, but now I've, I've decided a fix for it. But um, anyhow, double check everything. Make sure that you didn't measure to the wrong side. Check both ends. Again, I want to go my, uh, make sure I'm at four feet here. That's at four feet. That's there. That's in the right spot. Measure down. Make sure you're at 12 inches. Make sure you're at 16 inches. This is going to vary depending on what you guys are doing, what you're building. Make sure that this is at four inches. So that all looks the way it should look. Now, what I have to do now, and I'm not going to bore you guys with all that, but what I have to do now is transfer all of these lines down to the other side, and we're going to do the same thing. We're going to measure off of, seeing as how these two sides are really square together, I mean, they're about as perfect as I, can, I could ever get it or even buy it. I'm going to take all my measurements I can measure the same way down on that on that side. So, so I hope this helps some of you guys. If you are uh, looking, if you're trying to do this and you're having trouble understanding the scarf joint, this is a pretty important joint. It's going to carry a lot of load for you. You really need to make sure you do it right. This thing not done right can have catastrophic results for you and you do not want catastrophe on your frames um, especially not the kind of work you're going to be putting in it's just 
take the time, do it right. Um, we're gonna, this tie beam is probably gonna be a few part series on here. Um, I would say two or three videos just because there's so, there's, there's quite a bit of information to cover on these joints and it's very, very important to get them right. Um, if you don't have these right, you're just going to hate everything from there out. So anyhow, you guys have a good evening. Thank you for watching. And uh, any questions, leave them in the comments below. I'll help you guys out as best I can. So you guys have a good evening.